Hey everyone, Golden Ninja 3000 here again. Today I'm reviewing Marvel Studios' What If set number 76201, Captain Carter and the Hydra Stomper. This set has 343 pieces, three minifigures, and it retails for $30 in the US. This was released on August 1st, and it is one of only two sets to be based on the Marvel Disney Plus shows, and this does have an awesome exclusive stealth suit Peggy Carter minifigure. So I'm going to be very honest in this review because this is not a set that I think is particularly good, but this is the best part of it by far, and this is the main reason to buy the entire set, is just to get this minifigure. This is Captain Carter in her own version of the stealth suit from Captain America the Winter Soldier, and I think that even though this figure only has two new prints, it is absolutely amazing. I love the shield print. To my surprise, this wasn't printed. Whoops on a dark blue shield, but rather on a dark bluish gray shield, just like the newer Captain America pieces. But this like goes all the way around the edge. So you don't really see like that gray edge. It's a great print. You've got silver in the middle and the Union Jack on the front. The only thing I don't like about it is that I like my minifigures to hold their shield um, with like their hand sideways. And so the design on it is like kind of upside down if you do it sideways and it's only like the right way if you have it straight out. That's a pretty minor complaint though. And that design does match the Union Jack on Peggy's chest. And there's a lot of great printing there. I really wish that we had gotten a stealth suit Captain America figure, but this is just really awesome. And it's great to see any version of the stealth suit in Lego. The only other issue I have with this figure is that she has this overused hairpiece. Um, it's not common in dark brown, so I like that. But this piece is used on so many female minifigures, and a new mold was made for Peggy in the minifigure series, so I don't understand why it wasn't included here. They're only a month apart. I also don't like the face print. The angry one, I think it's okay. Um, it looks enough like Peggy, even though I think it looks a little bit young um, for Peggy, because, I mean, Peggy is, you know, like a 30-year-old woman, and I feel like this looks almost like teenager-y. Um, and then this face just doesn't work at all. This gives you a better look at the back printing. She does have, you know, like a shield attachment point like Steve did, but that looks nothing like Peggy at all, and I really don't like that face print. So again, I don't understand why the CMF face print wasn't carried over instead of reusing Tonks's from Harry Potter, which is what this face print is. Steve Rogers is fine. I mean, there's not really much else to say about him. He has a new torso print, which I think looks cool, but I think he sorely is missing like some kind of detail in the legs, even just like a hip print, because to me, it kind of just looks like he's wearing pajamas almost because it's just like all one color. I mean, it's a nice torso print, but that face print is not right for him, I think. I just, I don't think it looks like young skinny Steve at all. It just, it looks like older Steve, so I don't think it works well. The back torso printing is really nice, and he does have an alternate angry face, uh, but again, I just, I don't love this. I think that this is the exact same. It's either the Han Solo face, no, no, sorry, yeah, this is the Han Solo face, not the one that they used for Steve in 2016, but yeah, this just, it looks like older Steve. It does not look like the Steve that we're going to see in What If. And lastly, we've got the Red Skull. This is technically our first MCU minifigure of him. However, it is a repeat from the Avengers Tower battle set, um, if that's what it was called. I don't remember exactly. From 2020. I'm okay with that because this guy's torso print was based on the MCU version for that set. So honestly, like everything worked out. He also has leg print here, which he didn't have there. And that's great, because even though that piece is used on a lot of figures, it's always nice to get a little bit of light printing. He's carrying a stud shooter. You guys know how those work. And then he's also holding a new version of the Tesseract. This is a Minecraft head just made in trans light blue. That is fantastic. And even though it's massively oversized, I think that it's a very creative way to represent the Tesseract instead of just using that one by one brick that was always used before 2021. He's also got a little bit of back printing. However, I have to say, I don't love the face print. Um, it is also returning from that Avengers Tower set, but it, it just, it looks a little bit too cartoony for MCU Red Skull. So it would have been nice if they had resurrected the older face print from like 2013. So as I said earlier, I'm going to be very honest in this review. I don't like this set. I don't think this mech looks good at all. And I want to tell you guys that right off the bat, because even though it's a good design, I just think it looks terrible. It's so chunky and like stunted it looks like it looks like a juvenile mech like if mechs were like creatures that grew in the wild this looks like it it was like stunted while growing 
I think that that's a really bad way to feel about this because other toys of the Hydra Stomper are so cool. And besides just like that stunted chunky look that I really hate, and I think you guys can see what I'm talking about, especially like in the hands and like in the chest and then in the thighs, I hate the color. This thing is not this bright, like, gaudy green. It's like an olive green or like a sand green would be closer to what it, to the color that it is, like, in Lego's palette. And so we do have sand green highlights here, and those look great, but the entire set should be made in this color. Making it in Lego's, like, regular green throws the whole thing off, and it makes it look ten times worse, in my opinion. The other thing that makes this set look terrible are the stickers, because the stickers weren't cut correctly on my version, so you'll notice that all of them are like off center because they were cut so terribly. Like there's so much gray to the right of that black line than there is to the left. You'll notice it on the green stickers as well. You can really notice it with the grays here too. And that is an issue I've encountered on other sets recently. And it is the stupidest issue I've ever seen from Lego because cutting stickers correctly should not be a difficult thing to accomplish. And so the fact that like I have to apply all of the stickers slightly off center to account for the fact that Lego couldn't cut them correctly really made me not like this set even more. With that out of the way, let's start taking a closer look at the mech. We can start with the chest section since we were right there. I really like that sticker with the Captain America shield print, although I don't know why that would be there. Um, if Steven isn't Captain America. I think that might be supposed to be a U.S. Army logo in the show, which of course Lego's not going to put in a set. I'm guessing that's why this isn't olive green either, but that's a dumb reason to me. If you're not going to make a set accurately, then don't bother to make it. This is actually a glow-in-the-dark piece behind a 1x2 trans light blue tile. That's a great effect. The Iron Monger set this year also has a glow-in-the-dark kind of like center section, so I'm going to grab my UV flashlight so we can see how that works. It's still daytime, so we do have some light in here, but once I've shined that up, you can see there is a faint glow. Yeah, there. It's showing through much better when I cover it up. That is a really great look. I think that works a lot better than even the Iron Monger one, and it's just a really simple and effective way of, you know, adding a little cool function to these Iron Man suits. It's fairly easy to get into the interior. You can lift this printed construction face piece up, just like on the Iron Monger set, although it's got like a couple fewer like planes of articulation. And then you can also fold this down. So it does give you access much more like a traditional Hulkbuster. And you can see a minifigure right in there. It's actually pretty roomy, but there's no controls whatsoever. Another drawback to this set, I think, because you could have easily put one more sticker like on that inverted slope piece so that Steve could have some kind of controls or even just like studs to represent buttons or something. So I think that it's really lame that there's absolutely nothing there. And when that head comes down, you can still see him really clearly inside. I think that that's not acceptable. Like there's so much gapping in there, it's like absolutely insane. And if you just put like one more piece like over there, it would help cover that up a bit more. In general, I don't think this head works as well as the Iron Monger one because, like I said, it's missing that kind of, like, extra neck section. So even though it moves back there and, like, it bends right here as well, I just don't think it covers the figure as well. And it just, it, it just does not work anywhere near as well as it did on Iron Monger. The arms are also extremely chunky, as I said. They are on ball joints up here, so that gives you some nice movement. But then the only other movement they have is an elbow joint right here. So again, this entire thing is just stunted and really, really awkward looking because, like, look at these arms. Like, these are just, like, th like thick, like, blocks attached to the side of the mech. I don't think it looks good, although I do think that that, like, little bit of gear back there, that is a nice detail. You've got movable fingers, but it's not like it can hold anything because, again, the arms are just so fat. So, yeah, I'm not impressed with that. You have great shoulder movement. Like, I really like the shoulder movement. It's just, like, look at how stupid that looks. That does not look, like, it doesn't look menacing at all. It doesn't look anything like the show. And it just looks, it just looks bad, honestly. I, I, I hate to keep harping on it, but I just don't think that this is an acceptable design considering the source material. You do have stud shooters over here, so I'll go ahead and fire that off too. And wow, I actually didn't lose that piece. But yeah, I mean, let me try having it hold a figure because I really don't think it can. There's just not enough room. Like right there, as soon as you start curving those hands around, 
Like as soon as you start curving the fingers around, like there's just, there's not enough space. The figure's always gonna fall out. And that's really disappointing. I thought it was gonna work there for a second. You do have some more stickers on the arms as well. These look okay, but again, there's like way too much green on this sticker and that cut off the gray down there a little bit. And then around the back, um, or, I mean, I forgot to mention up on the top, we do have an antenna. Um, that's nice. And there are like some phone pieces used for greebling up here. And you've got these booster rockets on the back. Um, I don't understand why they aren't a consistent color. So I don't think that these look very good either because they are gray, black, and green. Whereas in the show, they are just all green. So kind of a fail there in my opinion. And the other thing that's a massive fail is that there's no spot to attach Captain Carter. That is like one of the most iconic things in like the what if marketing. That's one of the most iconic shots is Captain Carter like perched up between this thing's rockets and like riding like confidently into battle. So the fact that you can't put her here is, it's just, it's a huge missed opportunity. It's like, it, it makes like a bad set even worse in my opinion, because it, it, there should be something there. There's room there. All you have to do is add like three pieces like, even add a chair for her. I'd, I'd like to have a chair at the very least, because there should be some way to make her ride this thing in a set that she comes in with, like, this robot that she is seen riding in the trailers. The legs are not as bad as I expected from the image on the box, and, I mean, again, I feel like I'm being really mean to this set, so I will say this whole thing looks better in person than I thought, except for the arms. The arms are ten times worse, but everything else is, like, a little bit better. The legs, the box art doesn't do them any favors, but I actually really like the design. Like, these are built up with a lot of nice sloped pieces, and I especially love on the feet how these corner tiles, like, wedge into each other so perfectly. Like, this is just a really clean, great look around, like, the toes for me. Like I said, these are still stocky, but they do look a little bit better than, for example, the arms, and you can get it to go into like some pretty low positions, and I think that's what made it look so bad on the box, because it was basically like squatting there, kind of like this. Like that's when it starts looking bad to me, but the legs are a lot better than I expected in general. And as you guys saw from messing around, you've got a ratcheted joint right here, so you can get a lot of movement out of those hips. And then you've also got a ball joint at the ankle. There's nothing restricting that movement, so that's really nice. And then the base of the feet, they even have some repulsors in there, so that's a great detail. That's the kind of stuff you used to see on, like, Hulkbuster armors, and so I really like seeing that return. Now, getting this to go into poses can be a little bit hard, but let's give it a shot. Surprisingly, I did manage to get this to balance on one leg. Usually you have the arms to counterbalance. You don't have that here. And again, given how stocky everything is, it's a little bit hard. You can also try a running pose. I haven't really found the best success with that because like, I mean, that kind of works, but this is more kneeling. Um, I, I haven't found the most success because again, everything is just so short and like thick that like, like this doesn't look good. Like it, it, it works but it doesn't really look like it's going anywhere. It kind of just looks like it's falling, not really like it's running. Here's a proper kneeling pose. I was trying to get it to do, you know, like the Iron Man pose, but it can't do that because its tiny little arms can't reach anywhere close to the ground. And an odd little thing included in the set is like this just boat stud slider piece with four extra studs shooter shots on it. Here are the extra pieces, including some extra shots for Red Skull as well. And here is what I mean by the stickers being terribly cut. You can see like down here how so much gray is left and so little green is left. But then up here, these two stickers were the worst. You can see that they were almost off the sheet, like completely like off that like color outline. And again, I don't understand why that happens because I thought that, you know, Lego would be able to control that a lot better. Here's the box for this set. I really love the art design for What If, but something that's really weird to me is that this was a $20 box size, even though it's a $30 set. Um, I don't really know why that is. Maybe it's just because it's a retailer exclusive, but it's just strange to me because it really does not make me feel like I'm getting my money's worth. Um, on this side, you've got the Marvel logo. I just, I really love that starry background. And the art on the back of the Lego Watcher is also beautiful. But I mean, the back of the box really shows you how little functionality the set has. It's just a stud shooter. That's like all it can do. The instruction manual for this set is actually a lot bigger in surface area than I was expecting. And at the back, we don't have any ads whatsoever, not even for the other What If set or the Infinity Saga ones. 
So as I said before, I just don't think this set is good. I think that this is easily the worst of like the Hulkbuster style builds that Marvel has, or that sorry, that Lego has done. And considering that this is coming out on the same day in the US as two other sets that are $35 and $40 and also Iron Man mechs, I would not buy this. I'd say save your money, buy Captain Carter online, buy that Tesseract piece online, and you're good to go. If you like all three minifigures, the set might be worth it to you, but yeah, I just, I'm not impressed. I knew I wasn't going to like it from the images, but I was trying to keep an open mind, and while I was building it, I was like, okay, you know, the body's kind of weird, but like the legs are a lot better than I thought, and then I got to the arms and it all fell apart for me. And again, the fact that this mech like can't do anything, like the very least I expect from a Lego mech is to be able to like pose it. Um, usually they have like some kind of shooting function and then you can always like hold a minifigure in its hands. The fact that this can't even hold a minifigure in its hands is like a huge drawback for me and just makes it worse in my opinion. And again, like, so it can't hold a minifigure. All it can do is shoot off like one stud from each hand and it doesn't even have a spot to put Peggy on the back of it. Yeah, it's just, it's just a massive disappointment to me. I think that this is a major miss, and LEGO shouldn't have made a set of the Hydra Stomper if they weren't willing to make it look good and play well. So I really wish that we had gotten some other What If set instead, but I am happy that we got Stealth Suit Peggy, so maybe it's all going to work out in the end. That's it for my thoughts on this set. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and check out my website, goldenninja3000.com, and I will see you guys with more videos soon. Bye for now.